Hey, hey, fam. Cold case cause here. I just wanted to show you my rainwater catch system. And we've had the craziest weather. It's been pouring down rain, sleet, snow, hail, back to rain. Uh, it's been warm, and then it gets down to negative, and then back to warm. So we're in a warm spell right now. And, um, oh, the weather's just been miserable, y'all. But I'm not going to let it get me down. I told you I'd come live and be consistent. So that's what we're doing. And I'm here, and we're going to make the best of it. So that's the reason why I didn't go live on Sunday is because it was pouring down rain and hail and blizzard and all that. So, welcome. We're going for it. We got the sun poking through the clouds finally. The good creator shining down on us and let, letting our love light shine. So we are here and this is a off-grid cabin survival segment. And during this segment, I'm going to go over my picks for 2024 on survival gear. And um, it ranges, as you can see. So let's just jump right into it before this weather catches up to it. Because I'm going to try to get this video uploaded close to 5 o'clock. So I wanted to start off by saying there hasn't been any updates in the case uh, with the head and the hands in Grand, Grand Junction. The uh, unfortunate head and hands hands that were found in a deep chest freezer <clears throat> by the new homeowners of a house in Grand Junction off Pinion Avenue. So um, <clears throat> there hasn't been any updates. They're still analyzing the DNA, but we're sitting on pins and needles waiting to see uh, who this person is and maybe if it can solve a cold case here in Colorado. <clears throat> so that's the update on that. Uh, not much going on there still, but... Uh, you know, it's been a dreary, wet few days, and uh, the sun's poking through, so we're going to jump on this, so let's get right to it. So, our first thing on the list of our 15, top 15 picks for 2024, and I'm sorry, y'all, look, everything's soaking wet. I had it all laid out nice, and it was sunny, and then it started pouring down rain, so the creator had other uh, plans for us today. So, this is the very first thing I'd like to talk about. See this. This is parachute cord. A lot of y'all know what parachute cord is. It has many uses. Parachute cord is very versatile. Anything from tying up corners on structures to tying up your ankle. If you break your ankle or twist your ankle, uh, you can uh, splint your ankle with, uh, you know, wood and use this to tie it up real tight so you can get back down the trail. Uh, so many uses of parachute cord. You know, simple stuff like... You know, hanging stuff from trees, hanging meat from trees. If you if you're hunting, uh, hanging your uh, like a clothesline. Um, so many uses for this parachute cord. It's very strong. It's super strong. It won't break on you. Um, I've even seen people make hammocks out of uh, like really nice, beautiful hammocks out of nothing but parachute cord. So I'm a big fan of this stuff. Uh, you can tie up stuff on your belt. I mean, the, the <clears throat> possibilities are endless on this strong parachute cord. And I suggest that everyone carries a wad, a parachute cord everywhere they go. Um, <clears throat> if you're hiking or camping or in the back country, uh, always have a good amount of this parachute cord because it can, uh, it can come in handy for uh, a, in a lot of emergency situations. So <clears throat> that's the first thing on the list. Number two, let's just get popping. This torch right here is probably one of my most important top three things that I use in the survival game because this torch right here is very versatile. It's a uh, <clears throat> benzomatic propane torch and uh, it's got a little button right here you push and it flames out real high and it's good for starting fires real quick. It's good for starting wet fires. Like right now with all this wet wood, you can sit there and torch it and go back and forth on a pile of sticks and it'll sit there and, and smoke for a minute, but then it'll end, end up catching fire. It's a, it has a very high heat temperature so um this is really good in the winter time <clears throat> if your generators froze solid so a lot of times generators won't crank y'all if it's uh you know below five ten degrees outside that oil you know it hardens up in the tank so it, if you take this torch and just lightly run it around uh the oil where the um the oil cap is 
the oil dipstick, uh, the solid steel cylinder there, and just the exhaust and just go all the way around with it for uh, 30 seconds and that generator will crank right up. Uh, this works real good. You can even use this for self-defense. You hit this torch and it's blasting the torch out and you're swinging it around. I mean, it will scare away a dog. Uh, it's good for just thawing out. You know, if you have something frozen on your vehicle, if your windshield is froze thick, solid with ice, you can use this to, to, to warm up your windshield to melt it so you don't have to sit there and let the defrost if you're in a hurry. Uh, I love this torch. This torch has, got, has saved my butt. And uh, it's always important to keep a couple of these tanks. These tanks are real cheap. You can get a couple of them for like 15 bucks from uh, Home Depot or I think even Walmart carries these. But I always carry a benzomatic torch and I always carry a backup torch because a lot of times the igniter will go out, but uh, you can still light it with a lighter. So um, very, uh, very good piece of equipment to have in the back country in a survival situation. Um, this top screws off, so if you're going to transport it like in your back, you just take this off and this, you know, you carry one of these on a camping trip in your backpack, works real good. So that's the second thing on the list. The third thing, good old fashioned duct tape. And I know uh, it seems kind of silly, but duct tape is also a very versatile thing. Um, they've come a long way since this is the original regular duct tape, which I'm a, a big fan of. But they also, Gorilla Tape makes a new product, which is this right here, which is a, <clears throat> it's like glorified duct tape. It's a waterproof sealer. It's got a sticky side and you peel the, you peel the plastic off. But this right here, y'all, this is an amazing product because you can use this in your tent if you have leaks or your, uh, your cabin roof. If you have leaks, it's good for sealing up stuff. Uh, again, if you break your ankle, you can wrap this around your ankle and it, and then and peel the tape and wrap it really tight if you have broken bones uh anything like that this is very versatile and super strong as you can see um this is this would even be good for building structures uh you know holding wood together uh, <clears throat> the possibilities are endless with this stuff i big fan of this new gorilla tough uh waterproof tape stuff here so it's kind of expensive but man it's worth it i'm telling you uh, and like, for instance, I got little holes in my boots. It's good. You can cut a little section off this and patch the holes on your boots. And uh, it'll keep your boots waterproof. So, great product right here. This Gorilla Waterproof Taping. Okay. Next up on the list, <clears throat> I want to talk about blades. So, it's always important. I always carry a utility pair of scissors. Um, obviously, you know, the benefits of these are Fisker scissors and they're high quality brand and you can use this to cut rope, twine, sinew. Uh, you can use it to cut hide on elk fur. Uh, you can, you can be used to cut ligaments and stuff on animals when you're cleaning and deboning animals, uh, with fish. I mean, uh, you can use it to make clothes with, it's always great, uh, in a medical um, situation uh, you know like if you're trying to stitch stuff up or wrap ankles anything like that man scissors are a key necessity to have in the back country and survival and following right along with that I believe in having several different types of blade knives so <clears throat> the first one we'll talk about this is a Milwaukee box cutter very simple I always carry this and I carry replacement uh, blades for this so this is your utility knife this is going to be your workhorse knife. Everything you do around camp and uh, survival and everything, this is what you want to use to cut. Cut and open. This is okay to dull. You can cut on bone with this or wood or, you know, you're not going to, you don't want to use your nice fillet knives and your meat knives and stuff and your cooking knives to be doing utility work and to work around the cabin. Um, <clears throat> this little sucker right here comes in so handy, guys. I love this little, and when it gets dull, look, you just hit the button. And you can just replace the blade very simply. These blades just pop right in and out. So if it gets dull, you can just throw a new blade in and uh, get the popping. So this is the first blade I like. My second blade. So I believe everyone should have a slicing blade. I keep this this blade razor sharp. I mean, this right here will cut the hair. This will, this will shave right here. It's cutting hair. So I really like this as a, a Gerber made knife. 
Um, but I always keep, I always believe in keeping your blade razor sharp and only using this for either either cooking or self defense. You always want to have a knife blade that's razor sharp and can split a hair. Uh, it, having a sharp knife is key in the backcountry and with survival. Uh, you want to be able to cut a rope, like if a horse gets hung up and he's and the, the rope's super, snagged super tight, you can use this and you just hit it one time and, and it cuts it. And that's why you want to keep a super sharp knife with you. The last, uh, I also believe you should carry a machete. This is a SOG brand machete. And again, I keep my blades incredibly sharp. I, I haven't, if you can see, I never use this blade much on anything. I believe in having this ready, you know, in a defense scenario. Um, it has the glass breaking handle or a kabonker there. It's got a saw on the back, which is really nice for cutting branches out in the woods. Um, and the other side, like I said, y'all, I keep this razor sharp. I can shave my face with this blade right here. It's good for chopping. Like I said, self-defense, bear attacks. I keep this one right here to where I can just pull it out real quick and go to work with it. But SOG, uh, this is called a SOG Fari. <clears throat> it's a fixed blade. I'm all about fixed blades. I believe in fixed blades. Folding blades will can fail in an emergency situation if you're trying to stab or fight your way out of a an attack, a bear attack, you know, you name it. But it's got a great grip, and I'm a real big fan of this nice type tight blade. Um, and the last blades I want to talk about these, I call these pig pokers, and I always take a couple of pig pokers with me, back, way in the back country. And again, I keep them razor sharp. But <clears throat> this isn't for slicing. You want this to be your stabbing knife, uh, and it's kind of mainly for self defense. I love taking this knife right here. This is a carbon blade. It's called a Dexter Russell Carbon. It's a, a USA, and it's, it's like a fillet knife. But we call this pig pokers. So the point of this knife is in a self-defense situation, say a bear uh, or a predator, a, a cougar, or even if you run into, you know, psychopaths in the woods. Um, you, this is your poking knife, and I call it a poking knife. You don't want to be, so you don't want to be holding the knife like this in a self-defense situation where your arms all out like this, because a bear one swipe can take your arm clean off. You want to you want to keep your body tight and keep your arms in tight. And you want to lock your forearm like this and lock your wrist. And you don't want to go any further than this. Keep your stabbing motion quick. You want to come from your hips like you're swinging a baseball. And you want to stab quick. Okay? If a bear's charging you, you wait for the last second. I know it's hard. You kind of turn your back. But you use that knife to stab with. It's a pig poker. If a bear's coming to bite you and he opens his mouth, a lot of times a bear will go for your neck and head. And if you can have the wherewithal to not totally panic and break down, um, you take that pig poker when that bear's coming up with his mouth, you stick that poker right in his mouth. And this will deter a bear attack. I truly believe in carrying a pig poker and having it ready all the time. You got this knife for slicing and stuff. But you don't want to use this as a poker. This is strictly for self-defense for poking. And I'm telling you, you you are you are forced to be reckoned with in the woods. If a, a bear, a black bear, a grizzly bear is on you, you have a good damn chance stabbing at him with this. And it's razor sharp, so it'll cut through fur. But a couple of good stabs with that will fend off most people for sure, but also predators. And then at the end of the day, you have an extra fillet knife. But I truly believe in having a good long blade stabbing knife. And if you practice, I know it seems a little silly, but practice locking your arm in place with that knife. And you keep your arms in tight. And when you get attacked, you want to be a reactionary. You don't want to be an offensive attacker. You're standing back and you're in a defensive position. You have your arms in tight. And when that threat comes in close, all you're doing is stabbing and getting back to your stab and get back. And this is how real people knife fight, like in prison and stuff. So, never been to prison, but that's how they do it. Always want to keep that angle, keep it locked, keep it tight. And don't you don't want to extend. You don't want to be trying to stab at something like this. You're extending. That bear could swipe your arm clean off. So, stay tight. Keep your composure. Try not to panic. And get and stab when you can. When that bear's coming in with his mouth, you want to... The best thing you can do is run a damn long knife blade. I've even heard of people using ski poles. And you can stick it in that bear's mouth 
and it'll cause them to have a gag reflex and an actual will halt a bear attack. A nice long pig poker knife. And I'm very, this is like one of my favorite survival tools to have. I, I feel very safe with a long pig poker. So, and this is the back of one I keep. Again, same thing, keep tight. It's got a nice long blade. You can really do some damage. Okay, we're gonna parlay all that. I always believe in carrying bear spray. This is Frontiersman bear spray deterrent. I always carry two or three of these. You wanna have several. Um, you know, they don't always work, guys. A grizzly bear will go right through this and, and take a face full of this bear spray and keep biting. So uh, I believe in the pig poker more than I do the bear spray, but the bear spray is good for, to have um, in case of a charging bear or, you know, psychopaths in the woods or, you know, I always carry this on my, on my hip when I'm hiking. <clears throat> uh, or just in any shady situation, we got coyotes that are always coming close. Uh, I see big cat tracks all all around here, and you can spray a cat with this and animals with this too, and it'll it'll uh, it'll run them off right away, most of the time. Okay, what's next? Saws. I'm a big proponent of having saws in survival situations, and these basic cheap hand saws, uh, you know, <clears throat> very simple. Lightweight, you can keep this in your pack. This saw right here is great for cutting branches. And uh, this is another style one. This is a folding one I, I carry. So I bring these with me uh, in the back country. I take both of these. You wouldn't believe how many times this has gotten you out of buying. This can build you a shelter right here. This one saw right here. Being able, and, and you're not, you're thinking, you're not trying to saw all the way through the wood. You saw halfway through or quarter way through it and then you can break it the rest of the way. So that's the idea with that. Um, keep right in line with the saws. This is a long pole saw, and like this is really good to have at your cabin. Uh, it's good for hitting up high branches, knocking icicles off. Again, this can be used in a, a self defense situation if something's charging you, you know, to fend off uh, coyotes or bear. It's got a real sharp, gnarly blade on the end, uh, and this right here cuts through wood real quick. So even like a long dead tree, if you get to work in it, you know, I use this to cut rounds and then split with wood. So it's got a nice long, so you can really get some good uh, leverage and uh, it cuts real nice. So I'm a big fan of having a pole saw. You can cut firewood all day with a long pole saw. So. All right, what's next? So let's get into transportation. Big fan of having some really, these are called Yukon Charlie snowshoes. And this is a, a key thing to have when you're in a snowy backcountry or any, anywhere with snow. I learned this the hard way. Last year we got <clears throat> like six foot of snow out here in a very short amount of time. And I was, I'm slipping all over the place, y'all. It's a damn ice slip slick out here. But I got trapped and I tried to walk out and you're post hole deep, post hole in, in like, waist to chest deep snow just falling through it and it i mean it can get really dangerous and you overexert yourself and that's when you can uh overheat uh or have a heart attack even a uh, cardiac arrhythmia you get start panicking falling in that deep snow and it can really be scary so i truly believe in keeping these suckers because this allows you just to walk right on top and this allows you to make a trail this is the most important thing this allows you to make a trail so when you're going, you're stomping down. All you have to do is do one track out and one track in. Then you got a nice beat down trail. And then the dogs can walk on it and stuff. And you can actually, you know, make that your main route of travel. And you can start beating it down with these things. Um, they got nice spikes on the bottom. They're really, they're lightweight, super lightweight. Uh, these things will save your life, guys. I truly believe if you're going into any area where it snows, always bring... Some big, some nice, lightweight sh snowshoes. You can get these for 30, 40 bucks. They're not expensive, guys. And they will save your life <clears throat> in an emergency snow situation. All right, next, let's talk about um, <coughs> so along with the torch, you know, this is pretty basic, but just a basic propane stove, guys. Um, this breaks down very easy. The top bottom pops off and it unscrews. For transport so you can fit in your pack if you're going in the back country or on horseback you know it, it all collapses pretty easy and you carry one little tank with you 
You can get buy two of these tanks for 10 bucks from Walmart. And these suckers are nice. You can cook a full meal right here on this little stove. In line with that, I like to take this cup, this tin cup right here it is an amazing survival tool, let me tell y'all. Uh, it's great for making coffee. You can cook anything in here. A little bit of water and you can put meats in here and make soups. Um, you can set it right on a fire. Uh, I really love this. It's got a it's got the nice handle and I, I take a pair of pliers and you can cook with it. Uh, boil water to drink, you know, if you want to purify water. It works real quick on the stove. It takes literally like a few minutes to heat up and boil water and purify it. Uh, I really, I'm a huge fan of these tin cups, man. They are so versatile. You cook, you can drink out of them, you can cook with them. It's good for storing water, liquids, all that. You can feed, you know, it's a dog food water, uh, dog water bowl when you're on the trail. Man, get you some of these. And it doesn't look like it's that big, but this is a big full cup of coffee. I mean, this is a, a, a proper cup of coffee in the morning if you fill that up. So, I truly, I'm a big fan of these, these very simple stainless steel cups. Okay. So, I want to talk about starting fires real quick. I believe in using cotton balls. Cotton balls are a great, great way to start a quick fire. And it can also be used in a medical situation. Uh, you can use cotton and cotton balls to pack wounds. They're real good if you have a big open gash, say from a bear attack, and you're bleeding out. You can take, uh, I take these non-stick Johnson & Johnson pads, and it comes out, and it looks just like a regular pad, but if you tear it up, look at this, y'all. And you start fluffing this up, look at that. See that white fluffy stuff? You wanna talk about starting a fire quick. You get you fluff a bunch of the stuff up like this, and you get down with a couple pieces of cedar, and this is gonna be on another episode coming up soon, possibly next week, another survival episode. I'm gonna teach y'all how to make a fire from two pieces, of, uh, from a section of cedar, and then a stick of cedar, and how to start a fire. And this is how you do it. You get this fluffy stuff, and after you get a good friction going, you keep this light, white, fluffy stuff right near where the friction is. And when you get that first spark, this is your bed. And that spark goes right on this cotton bed. And poof, I mean, you got you a fire. You got you a fluff. The quickest fire that you can imagine. Um, I can show you. <coughs> it takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to start a fire from scratch from two sticks and some of this light cotton, guys. This stuff is great. Gauze. Like I said, for uh, patching wounds up, uh, gushing wounds for your teeth. If you have a teeth, tooth socket problem in the back country, uh, many good uses of this light, really light cotton wadding. Big fan of this. And you just tear open a gauze pad and just fluff it out of there. But really good for starting fires. They're like the best thing you could possibly use to start fire. And that uh, rolls into this. So I always believe that you should have a proper medical kit. This is a full kit bug out bag. And this is essentially a emergency room kit all in one. I got everything. I cover all the bases in this kit. And again, we're going to go through on another, ep uh, another segment. I'd like to cover what you should carry in your medical kit, bu medical bug out kit. With this kit right here, I have everything in here from Narcan to Band-Aids to condoms to uh, <laughs> hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, nitro gloves, uh, prep, alcohol prep pads. I, I carry some Narcan in here. I mean, I got uh, alcohol wraps. Uh, I got full bedding. I mean, I got all types of got heat blankets. Uh, we're going to go over that on another time, though, what you should keep in your bug out. I mean, I could literally... Uh, stitch someone up uh, from a horrible wound or an accident or a bear attack, I could totally stitch someone up here with this medical kit. And I believe in having a proper medical kit, uh, a paramedics bug out medical kit to where you could handle any situation that could arrive from battle or uh, an attack from a predator or a human, or even if you lost a limb, uh, I have uh, tourniquet stuff in here. Uh, so it's key to have your medical because that's what saves your life. We're out here in the back country. The closest, you know, hospital is Durango, which is 45 minutes at least to get to Durango from here. And that's driving, guys. That ain't trying to hike out. 
So you got to be prepared medically. I get my daughter out here sometimes, you know, uh, we get, um, there's hunters always get hurt and stuff. And so we like to be prepared for everything all the time. The dogs get wounded. They get attacked, uh, by coyotes and stuff. There's always some drama going on out here in the middle of nowhere in the back country. So, like I said, you want to be prepared and that leads to the seven P's, the seven lucky P's that I've been trying to tell y'all about. I'm going to beat you to death. The seven lucky P's perfect prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. Say it with me. Perfect prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. And you can write that down and never forget that. If you stay prepared all the time, you will be, you will survive in the back country and have a successful and happy life. But like I said, you, uh, perfect prior preparation. You want to have all the stuff. It seems like a lot of stuff, but in, you, I can fit all this in my pack very tightly. Um, other, uh, like, other than this, other than the medical kit. So if I go camping in the back country uh, or anything like that, or go on a long search where we're going to be overnight, this is what I will bring uh, on that search. You can survive a long time off this gear that I just showed you right there. So I hope you're having a great middle of the week. Um, the sun's out and I can be very happy about that because it's been gloom and doom around here lately. And uh, so, but we got some sun on the horizon guys and uh, we can be grateful for that. Be grateful for the creator because we do need this moisture, believe it or not, uh, for the spring. And hopefully, I think we're going to have an amazing spring out here this year. But thanks for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed this segment of off-grid cabin living and my picks for 2024 in a survival backwoods situation, uh, my top 15 picks. So stay tuned because we're going to be coming live Friday, coming up Friday. I got another segment that I'm going to be posting around five o'clock. And again, we're going to be posting videos Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday around five o'clock mountain time. So that's why I'm hurrying with this video because I got to hurry up and turn it off and get it uploading because out here in the country, it takes over an hour and a half to upload a little video. So I'm going to leave you with that. Please like and subscribe. Turn on that notification bell, guys. I can't thank you enough. And your 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 comments and down in the chat are such a blessing. I feel so loved. And I love all you back. And I'm so grateful you were here on this roller coaster ride with us. And stay tuned. We got big things coming with the Suzanne Morphew case. You're not going to miss this stuff. So like I said, guys. Thank you so much. Blessings to you and enjoy the rest of your week and we'll see you on Friday. Hallelujah.